This is NR2003 Predicts. Using constantly updating ratings, we determine where Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series drivers will place at any given track any given week. Standard disclaimer, this video is for entertainment purposes only using the process of automated intelligence and should not be used in the process of gambling. So here's how it works. We update drivers' ratings week by week as we go throughout the Monster Energy NASCAR Cup Series schedule. We run a 100% simulation with normal tire wear and fuel consumption. Qualifying results match what the drivers actually ran in real life. Because qualifying data can't be arranged at the same time as forcing cautions, stages will not be enforced throughout these races. And weather used reflects the real-time data based on the actual start time of the race. It really is a perfect day out here in Avondale. Ryan Blaney and Chase Elliott on the front row. The green flag flies here at ISM Raceway. Ryan Blaney immediately using that dog leg shortcut. Gets a big jump off of Chase Elliott. I saw Daniel Hemmick slide across the racetrack there. He's on the very low line. Not sure who made contact with him there. But it looks like we're all safe and sound. As Ryan Blaney pulls out and makes it a little bit of a single file field out near the front. And Blaney's going to lead the first lap in this one. Chase Elliott slots in the second. Kyle Busch in third. Now Kyle Larson... He had some qualifying woes on Friday. That put him further back in the field. You can see that those troubles are just as bad as he expected them to be as he's starting to drift further back in the field. Only 36 cars here today, all the chartered entries. But Larson definitely having one of those bad days to start off with. And one of the bigger stories on Friday was the scuffle between Daniel Suarez and Michael McDowell. And you can see Suarez trying to make his way back up through the field. Obviously was not happy with McDowell. 34, I believe, kind of slid further back in the field while Suarez is starting to make a little bit of a game. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. also not having a very good start to his race. You can see he's battling with the 77 car. That's not a car that you're going to expect the 17 to run with. I think he has a little bit more speed than that, but trying to see if he can make his way through the field and just worked his way around Quinn Half. Joey Logano, last week's winner at Las Vegas, up here in the top 10, fighting with Alex Bowman. Good win for Logano as he's extended Penske's win streak to two races. Brad Kozlowski at Atlanta and then him at Las Vegas, trying to see if they can go for three in a row. Ryan Blaney kind of helping that case right now as he leads the field. Kevin Harvick, he was the winner of this race last year. And that came a week after a vi uh, victory he got at Las Vegas was taken away, or at least the benefits were. And he came back and just thundered on through this field and got the win here. Trying to see if he can back that up. Looks like his teammate, Eric Almirola, just blew right by him. Ryan Blaney's finally going to catch up to some traffic. Corey LaJoy is going to be that first car that's right in front of him, but he's having some trouble getting around him. As they go through the dog leg, they like that shortcut, but 12 having a bunch of troubles getting around the 32. And you can see Chase Elliott and Kyle Busch just blow right by him on turns 1 and 2. Meanwhile, Kevin Harvick, slipping a little bit further back in the field, gets hit by Michael McDowell going into turn three. And that would send both of those cars up into the wall and heavy damage for the four car of Kevin Harvick and the caution would fly for the first time in this race. Looks like McDowell tried to get down there and tried to cut Kevin off in terms of getting into the corner, but Ford did not see him coming and at a much faster speed and turned right into him. Chase Elliott would lead the field off of pit stops and he would get ahead of the lapped cars, and Kyle Busch would be right behind him. A couple of Dillon brothers having a little bit of trouble. Ty Dillon just really hasn't had any speed since this race started. Now the three car getting held up behind the 13. Really working to see if he can get ahead, and finally does. Joey Logano, once again, he's running eighth place. As far as Penske goes, they're continuing their speed. They are all within the top 10. Ryan Blaney running 5th. Keselowski 7th. And then there's Logano. As I just saw Kurt Busch make a big power move to the outside of Chris Buescher. And continuing that momentum trying to challenge the 22 car. Jimmy Johnson. Another one of those guys that's having some problems today. In terms of finding some speed. They're at the back of the field. I believe that's the final few cars that are still in this pack. Though some have dropped off and are starting to hold up the leaders. And Kevin Harvick back on pit lane. He stayed on the racetrack. 
or rather he was able to keep him going back into the garage, but clearly the problems are continuing for the four car. Eric Jones up here running in a podium position. Actually a pretty good driver here on this track in a limited sample size. Has an 11.4 average finish across the first five races he's run here. Trying to see if he can catch up with Kyle Busch, his teammate, and Chase Elliott. And you can see that the nine car is going to about head up to some traffic. As he's starting to reach Daniel Hemrick, who's continuing to not find some speed. Some of those other guys that are running a little bit slower. Kyle Larson, he's starting to make his comeback up to the front. Not quite there yet in the top ten, but he's running with some guys that he probably should be running with anyway, like Eric Amarola. You also got Clint Boyer and Chris Busher up there. Busher is currently the 10th spot, so that's the aim he's going for if he's trying to get in the top 10. Kyle Busch trying to work his way around Chase Elliott, and it looks like the lapped car of Bailey Curry is going to help him out a little bit. Nine car gets a little too low in turns one and two. The 18 powers through to the outside. That would give Busch the lead. But just as Larson looked like he was getting a little bit of ground made up, he's going to get in a little trouble. Hits Eric Almirola in the dogleg with David Reagan. And this creates a huge multi-car accident. Martin Drex Jr. and Kevin Harvick involved, although Harvick's already several laps down. Larson with some heavy front-end damage. But the wreck does not stop there, and you can see Austin Dillon with a little damage. He and William Byron get loose through the dog lake, trying to avoid it. And Daryl Wallace Jr. plows right into the driver's side door of William Byron. Sends him onto his roof and some major damage. And not even over there, Kyle Busch gets into the 52, and then... Plows into the back of Daniel Hemrick, and Chase Elliott doesn't get out of here scot-free. He has to scrape the wall just to get around the 43 and the rest of the accident. So, big hits taken here, and Kyle Busch still maintains the lead, so it doesn't look like it impacted him that much. But, early on in this one, just a lot of chaos. Several cars are going to be taken out in that accident, and it didn't stop there right off the green flag. Kurt Busch gets into Brad Keselowski. Ryan Blaney's teammate gets into it, and another multi-car accident heading into turn one just off the restart. Eric Almirola also involved. You can see he's the one that gets right into Ryan Blaney after he made contact with his teammate. And more cars spinning out from there in the back of the field. See another angle of this crash. There's one coming from Daniel Hemrick. Heading right into that smoke screen. Getting around everybody and maybe just a little contact with the cars crashing in front of him, like uh, Quinn Half, Cody Ware, and Ross Chastain, but he actually got out there with pretty minimal damage, which is exactly what he needs to start gaining some spots. Only ran one lap under that stint, so Kyle Busch obviously still going to stay out front. How about a little bit of a surprise right here, Landon Castle? He's fighting with some of these guys up here in the top 10, like Matt Benedetto. Trying to see if he can gain some positions. Really surprising to see a star come race machine running that well. Ryan Blaney back here. Now that he has his major damage to his race car, he is going to be a little bit further back in the field and avoid try to avoid going a lap down. Really bad break for the pole sitter. Denny Hamlin's starting to creep his way to the front, currently running fifth. But you can see that the gap that the front three have pulled on the rest of the field has really grown as Hamlin can just barely see the one of Kurt Busch who is just blowing up, running fourth place at the time, but Chip Ganassi Racing Machine is going up in smoke, and that means that that's a fatal damage for that race car as he's cutting back across the racetrack, trying to get out of the way of the rest of the field. But with Larson already damaged, he, that means Chip Ganassi Racing is going to have a bad day, and that would bring out a caution, by the way, because of the oil put down on the racetrack. Kyle Busch still leading the way as Eric Jones and Joey Pagano get a little bunched up right behind them. As they start to pull away again, Chris Buster though, still having a good day up here in fourth place. We've seen a lot of speed out of the JTG Doherty racing machines. They just haven't been getting the finishes at the end of it. But at the moment, Busher running fourth. Landon Castle just behind him. Still a surprise to see the 0-0 running that well. And we see right here, we got some traffic coming up as Looks like the 95 of Matt DiBenedetto is trying to make a move on Chase Elliott and possibly on Ryan Newman on the outside, getting a lot of speed. There is the 6 of Newman as 
Benedetto has already made his way around him. Newman's just outside of the chase cut right now, and that is probably a little bit of an improvement of where this team was a, a year ago, but obviously they were running two different drivers just in general with Trevor Bain and on the wheel wasn't really putting up a uh, performance. And Newman's starting to get them back to possibly a playoff spot as Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is already looking in pretty solid position, but he's still got a lot of races to go. Joey Logano trying to take advantage of the lap traffic, made his way around Eric Jones, and now trying to sweep his way around Kyle Busch on the outside, and it looks like he's going to get that position. 22 hits to the lead as he takes the wide lane in the dog legs of the track. And then some contact. Ross Chastain and Kevin Harvick, remember them? But then, some lead cars crashing out just behind this accident. And that creates some huge chaos as the cars come around turns 3 and 4. Look at this again, Kyle Busch running second at the time. Looks like he actually might have hit the inside wall as he tried to avoid the accident. Got into the 52 of Curry, who basically just got taken out in that one. Eric Jones also collected. And then cars that were running on the lead lap start to pile in. Here's from Jimmy Johnson's view. Eric Jones in third, just underneath him. And Jones looks like he got into the wall and pushed Johnson up there and gave the 48 some heavy damage. A very chaotic run right here. Joey Logano, though, got through it scot-free. So he's going to lead the field to the restart and chase Elliott. Now the one lining up in second, Clint Boyer in third. How about another surprise performance? Landon Castle's kind of falling off the top 10, but Quinn Hauf. He's now up here in the top 10. Spire Motorsports has just not been showing any speed so far this season, but the rookie driver in his first career cup race is giving them something to show. And Huff doesn't have much ex Xfinity experience, but in the races that he did run, he well exceeded the expectations of the cars that he was driving. Little bit of contact right here between Michael McDowell and Clint Boyer. 34 made his way all the way up to the top 10, challenging for top 5, which is actually kind of surprising, but a little bit of contact right there with the 14 of Boyer. And Chris Buescher has kind of fallen off the top 10. He was putting up that great performance we were talking about earlier, up there in 4th place, and now he's not inside the top 10. He might have gotten a little damage from that accident in turns 3 and 4. It was started by Harvick and Chastain. Daniel Hemmer still trying to find some speed in that machine. Obviously, he is a little bit damaged, and you can see it. In his front, his back end is basically taken off. But, and you don't expect a, a rookie to run his way into the playoffs, but at least up in the Cup Series. But just trying to see if he can find something different, because it seems like he should be running a lot better in RCR equipment. Chase Elliott trying to catch back up to Joey Logano, but lap traffic getting in the way. David Reagan just in front of him right now. As he'll try to work his way around him through the exit of turn two, and he gets by him with ease, but two second gap between the 22 and the nine. Here's a couple of teammates working together Clint Boyer and Daniel Suarez. Well, the problems that the four and the 10 have had so far this race must be doing a little bit well to see those two working together and trying to see if they can work their way back up to the front. Ryan Priest. About to go another lap down to the 22. I don't believe he is losing his first lap. We talked about how Hemrick was looking for speed. Ryan Priest is trying to do the same. And there is Hemrick as the 22 is about to go around him. Logano just picking drivers off one by one. Now about to go around Cody Ware, which, by the way, he's having a solid performance himself. You don't see him in that top 10, but that is, I believe, his first lap he's going down as the rest of these drivers, like Blaney, I believe, might be going um, more than a lap down. How about Ryan Newman? He's just coming out of nowhere. He doesn't even have a hood on that car. But he is caught up to Joey Logano as Elliott's falling to fourth somehow. And now as they get into this lap traffic, a big pack of them, Newman's trying to see if he can find his way around and take a damaged race car up to the front. Unfortunately, though, it doesn't look like Six is going to pull off the move. Meanwhile, Logano go around the three car. Put Austin Dillon down a lap for the first time. That's going to mean eight cars on the lead lap now. And Newman's going to call it in. This will be the first of green flag pit stops. Newman gives up that second spot. Logano stays out on the racetrack. Warren Truex Jr. trying to 
get back to the 22, but unfortunately going to go a little bit slower thanks to the 14 car who just lost his lap and now only five cars on the lead lap. We saw the contact Michael McDowell made with Clint Boyer earlier, while Daniel Suarez just hit the same with Ricky Stenhouse Jr. Got into him in the dog leg, crunched up his hood a little bit. And then, Newman on fresher tires, he just got into the 88 car, sent in for a minor spin. Caution flag flies, no harm, no foul, but as Bowman tries to go back down pit lane, he hits the, the pit lane wall. And then David Reagans hits Daniel Hemrick, who's stalled on the track, and that creates some huge chaos. Let's watch it unfold. Big hit by Ty Dillon into 38 and sends Reagan for a flip. But it doesn't end there. The leader, Joey Logano, sees it in front of him, tries to go down to the bottom lane, but there's no room on this racetrack. Hits the 17, and that's some major damage to that machine. Team Penske was trying to go for a three-peat. And it doesn't look like that's going too well for him right now, but Brad Keselowski still up there in second. Chase Elliott, though, is going to take the lead. Logano is still on the racetrack, just with a very damaged race car. And there you can see it. Hood's still on it, but the back end taken off. We're running behind the 52 and not seeming to get any closer. Performance definitely lost on that machine. Going to see what the 22 can do as he still runs in the top five based on how many cars have come a lap down. And how about Landon Castle working his way to the outside of Brad Keselowski? And the double zero in the second place as Chase Elliott has amassed a gap over the rest of the field. Very surprising thing to see. And Chase Elliott now going to have to deal with Joey Logano. As he has caught up to him. He's put a very solid gap on the rest of the field, but... Nine now getting held up by Logano, who's trying to avoid going a lap down and off a of turn two. It's not going to happen. He's going to lose that lap. And now Brad Keselowski is about to do the same. After running second place for the restart, Elliott's just going to blow right by him. Down to just three cars on the lead lap now. We've seen Ross Chastain in a few incidents today, but how about his position? He's up there challenging Corey LaJoy for 10th. And these guys are all lapped down right now, but... That doesn't mean they aren't frightened for position. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. Meanwhile, Ryan Newman trying to see if he can fight on Joey Logano once again. And this time he might have it as he goes to the inside of him on the dog leg. Six car trying to challenge, tried to challenge him for the lead. Now he's just going to have to sell for a position on the racetrack. Meanwhile, Chase Elliott trying to put Ryan Blaney another lap down. That moves your front row. And it looks like the tail of two different races as Elliott has stormed off to a big lead while Blaney is just trying to fight for some laps. Elliott's going to catch up to some lap traffic. That's going to really hurt him in terms of getting forward. He does have a solid gap on Landon Castle and Daniel Suarez at the moment. But obviously don't want to get too caught up in all the traffic. Bailey Curry, how about another driver taking his first laps around in a cup car? And he's up there in the top 10. And he's fighting Joey Logano for position. Really, this, this race has come down to a lot of who has the least amount of damage, but at the moment, it looks like the 52 has just got a little bit more performance than the 22 has. And Brad Keselowski finding his way to the outside of the 9 car, and that is to get one of his laps back. That just goes to show how much fresh tires are going to help a car, as Keselowski did get uh, some fresh rubber. That's why he was faster than the 9 at that point in time. Daniel Suarez fights his way to the outside of Landon Castle, gets that second position although they would swap those positions back and forth. Chase Elliott would come down for a pit stop, and that would actually mean that Landon Castle would lead a lap. That's a bit surprising. Had a little bit of a close call, though, as Denny Hamlin made a late call to come to pit lane. Those two made contact. That could have put Castle directly into the outside wall, but he would eventually come down. That would mean that Chase Elliott would be able to catch back up in pretty quick time. And here you can see, as Chase Elliott gets back to him, He's going to put Castle a lap down. Daniel Suarez continues to run second at the moment, but that only leaves two cars on the lead lap, as this has been a pretty wild race. And a little bit of a close call here as Curry also tried to make a late move to pit lane. Missed it completely, though. Held up Chase Elliott. Castle got his lap back. And then contact between teammates. More incidents with Curry as Cody Ware in the 51 gets into him in turn three. 
puts him into the wall. Caution comes out. With only two cars in the lead lap, though, that would just mean that uh, Daniel Suarez gets a little bit closer to Chase Elliott. Gives him a little bit more of an opportunity to try to fight for that lead. And he would try to get around him as quickly as possible. Gets to the outside line here, trying to look for the momentum. Just didn't work out there, as we're under 50 laps to go. And right here, though, he would be able to get that momentum swing. Just peeks to the outside, goes in, going down the backstretch. Able to fight his way around the number 9 car. And he heads to the lead for the first time in this race. And then, more issues with the 52 car. Coming off the dog leg, 21 of Palminar gets into him. Big hit for him. Goes around several times. Lucky he didn't get hit by anyone else, but that would bring out another caution. That would stack those two leaders back up once again. This would be the opportunity for Chase Elliott to try to make a move on Daniel Suarez. The 41 pulls away, trying to get the lap traffic as a little bit of a factor. Didn't quite work out. Suarez a little loose in turns three and four. Chase Elliott trying to fight his way back toward him and find a lane to get around him. He would keep battling into turns one and two. Didn't quite get the lane he wanted there, though. Probably need to take a different line into the corner. And the 41 would start to pull away. You could see there in the back, Brad Kozlowski trying to fight the 9 car as he seemed to have a little bit more speed. And in fact, as the 41 caught up to some more lap traffic, Kozlowski would fight to the outside of him and get his lap back. That would put him back on the lead lap. Not enough time to probably contend for the lead. But for what it's worth, he's trying to fight for his lap. And he's able to get around Suarez and the 51 car. Meanwhile, the 9 starts to slip back a little bit. In fact, makes more contact with the 22. And that would be major enough for Elliott that he believes that he might not make it to the end of the race. So, as he comes around, turns 1 and 2. Decides to make the late cut. Coming down to pit lane, giving up second spot. Trying to get that car repaired to make sure we can actually see the end of the race. But his chances of winning are done. And with Brad Keselowski, the only other car on the lead lap, he blows up right in front of Daniel Suarez. Really testy situation there, but Suarez is able to avoid the two of Keselowski. We would stay green, and Suarez takes the white flag. The only car on the lead lap, all he has to do is just stay out of trouble. And fortunately for him, there's only one lapped car in his way. Doesn't even need to fight fight Blaney that hard, just needs to take some laps around. But for Suarez, who had a tumultuous first two years in the Cup Series at Joe Gibbs Racing, got kind of throttled into that seat because of Carl Edwards' surprise retirement, got dropped and picked up by Stuart Haas Racing. But here at ISM Raceway, he takes the checkered flag for his first career Cup victory. A really bizarre race, but it ends up in the favor of the 41 car as Suarez is headed home with his first career victory. So here are the results from ISM Raceway as Daniel Suarez ends up the only car on the lead lap. Austin Dillon, Chase Elliott, Landon Castle, a surprise runner up there. Only one lap down and Ryan Newman fights the fifth. Some other underdog stories here. Ross Chastain gets up the seventh. Quinn Hauf in tenth. Brad Keselowski ended up in ninth even though his engine blew up. Really good day for Chevrolet and Ford. Definitely not for Toyota. Uh, the, the top running Toyota was Denny Hamlin in 15th, and obviously that's not the kind of day that they want to have. Only 19 cars ended up finishing the race. Kevin Harvick, the winner of this race last season, ended up 24 laps down after his heavily damaged race car just tried to turn laps. And Bailey Curry, Cody Ware, some of those other guys that were underdogs here that still ended up finishing the race. Here are the 21st to 30th positions. Every one of these cars DNF'd. Three Joe Gibbs racing cars down there, 28th to 30th. Not great days for them. And here in 31st to 36th. Also not very good day for uh, Chip Ganassi Racing, nor for Hendrick Motorsports. They had several of their cars drop out. That is it for this edition of NR2003 Predicts. We hope you will enjoy the race, and we'll see you next time.